What is going on guys? Now, if you're reading the title of this video, you probably can figure out what's going on and what this whole video is about. But now, you're probably wondering why in the world would I choose to drive a Camaro in the winter time? I came up with five reasons for myself to be driving my car in the winter. So if you're in a similar situation, let's say you have a, like a Mustang or Charger or Camaro, you know, something like that. If you have a rear wheel drive car and it, you live somewhere where you get snow, just like myself, you get snow, you get ice, you get a normal winter, but you're not sure if you should buy a beater car or drive something else. This might help you out with, with if you're deciding that. Um, but for myself, this is my own personal situation, so this is the reason why I'm putting together my five reasons why I'm driving my car during the winter. Everyone's gonna be different, but hey, this is my reasons why I'm gonna be driving my car during this winter season. So without further ado, let's get right into the first reason. Now, the first reason why I'm gonna be driving my car is because of I didn't wanna buy a winter beater. Now, if I would have had more time and more preparation, I probably would have found one, but when I was looking around online, I really couldn't find anything that I really felt comfortable with buying and that I thought would be reliable enough for like the winter time. Cause this, that's one thing, you don't want to have another car and it breaks down on you. Check out my other video if you haven't seen it about uh, what type of things you should, you should carry in your car. Um, Cause my girlfriend's car, it ran out of gas, she was stranded on the side of the road. That's never a good situation to be in, so just with the time that I had, I didn't want to find a beater car, I didn't want to buy a beater car and just try to drive that just because, yeah, I, just, I wasn't finding anything that was reliable enough. And especially if you live somewhere where there is snow and like a lot of people do buy beater cars, a lot of people, they're going to jack up the prices on some of these older cars that they're, they're wildly overpriced. That's, you know, that's one of the major reasons why I didn't want to buy a beater car. I wanted to make sure my car was reliable and my Camaro has been reliable, it's been great. And at least I know it's going to start up, it's going to run. So that's one thing that I take into consideration is that it will run and actually work. The second thing is my commute to work isn't that far. It is and it isn't. My commute is around 20 minutes, but it's mostly just back roads and it's just like kind of a straight shot. I don't have to take any highways or anything like that. If I had to do like a lot of like like a really long drive, like an you know, like an hour or something like that, that would change, you know, maybe that would change my opinion. Maybe I would look a little bit more for a beater car or something else, but my commute was pretty much a straight shot. I'm just going on back roads. Uh, the biggest thing I have to worry about is like a gust of wind coming across the fields and pushing more snow onto the road. That's my biggest issue, but overall, I don't have to do a lot of city driving with my car. It's kind of a straight shot. Um, so I think, you know, that that does play into it. The reason why I think I can get away with it. Um, I do have my girlfriend's car. If we have to go somewhere else, like into the town, or do anything else, like any type of like long traveling or something like that. We could take her car, and her car is actually great in the snow. So that is playing into that a little bit. Yeah, so my commute to work, it's about 20 minutes. It's like 14 miles one way and 14 miles the other way. So overall, it's not the longest commute. I know some people are probably thinking like, man, that's a long commute. But it, it, it I'm used to doing longer commutes, so that's really not that bad for me. The third thing is the extra cost. Now, a lot of people don't really think about that, that there's a whole extra cost when buying another car. You have to pay for the insurance. If you live somewhere like we do, like an apartment building, you have to make sure you can park it somewhere. Um, you have to, you know, just keep the general upkeep of that car. And if you're just gonna buy, if you're gonna be buying a beater car, it's not gonna be the best car. And you know, there's gonna be probably little small little issues here and there. So like, a, like this kind of goes in with my, my first option, but I didn't really want to invest extra money into something else. It just didn't seem like it would be right to be paying insurance on another car that I'm only going to be using for a couple of months. And honestly, when the weather gets better out, because, you know, yes, it does snow and all, but once the plows come and clear the roads, it's fine. Uh, so that was another thing. I didn't really want to invest that, that extra money into something else when that could be taking money away from my actual car and doing more stuff to my actual car um, but you know so that was that's another thing you have to take into consideration is the that extra cost for the insurance the gas storage and just all those other little things like maintenance on the other car um, 
So, you know, th th that's some of the extra things that you gotta take into consideration. So if you are looking for a feeder car, you gotta take that into consideration that there's gonna be some extra costs that you probably didn't really think about. The fourth reason is, I've been looking around and I haven't really found that much info on YouTube. I haven't really seen that many guys been, you know, taking their Camaros out there or their, you know, rear wheel drive cars and really doing some, you know, documents, uh, documentation on driving it in the winter and how it is. You know, I see a lot of people, you know, they put their, their cars up, which, you know, that's what you would normally do. But I haven't really seen that many people out there been showing what's it actually like to drive, you know, a rear wheel drive car. I know every thing is everyday driver they did a good piece on that um, when they had their FRS they did like a really good video on driving it out in the snow with snow tires and so I thought that was really good but I haven't really found that many uh, youtubers really showing that type of information out or just having that type of information out there so I thought it'd be good just to show you know what's it like to drive a rear-wheel drive car in the snow in the winter you know some of the positive and negatives how's it like you know on a daily basis so I thought I could bring that information out there give some guys who are probably doing some research and seeing is it possible and let you guys know you know how it is I don't you know at this moment in time I don't really know how well it's gonna go it could be a complete disaster and I can could regret this but I'm gonna document it and I'm gonna let you guys know so I thought it'd be nice to get the information out there and let people know really what it's actually like and then the fifth and final reason is I want to really know you know what's it really gonna be like because I don't know if I'm gonna keep this car or not now this may come as a shock to some of you guys if you haven't followed my channel very long or, or this is your first time you've seen any of, of my videos um, I got this car it's coming up I don't know it's probably like eight nine months ago um, after switching cars you know a bit but I don't know if I want to switch cars again or not uh, or what I want to do if I do switch cars so I want to get another uh, like a rear wheel drive sports car or something like that or don't want something completely different you know but I want to really know because I really like having just one car my preferred you know setup would be to have one car and one motorcycle so I'm trying to you know figure out is this a car that I can keep and really will I be satisfied with it all year round and really just be happy with it but I really want to you know see if I can drive my car during the winter time. If, if I can, then maybe if I want to switch and get something different, maybe it will be, you know, like a newer Mustang or something like that, or maybe a newer Camaro, who knows. But I want to really see what's it like. And, you know, if I can't, if it's, you know, completely like a disaster, um, then I'll know to look inside a different direction. But I really want to give some good documentation. What's it like to have a, you know, a rear wheel drive sports car in the winter? I really want to show what's it like to have it on a daily basis. I want to really see what's it like, you know, is it possible, can I do it? Um, if I can't, then, you know, then maybe I won't be looking for another two-door sports car because of, like I said before, I want to have a car that I can use all year round and it's, you know, going to be my one and only car that I can invest in, put time in, and really just build up to the way that I want it to be. But yeah, guys, so overall, those are my five reasons why I'm going to be driving my car during the winter. So overall, I just want to know how it's going to handle during the winter time, how's it going to be, what's it going to be like. Hopefully, I'm going to be documenting it for you guys, you guys can know. So if you're curious about, can you drive like a, you know, a Mustang, a FRS, BRZ, or Camaro, Challenger, or anything like that in the snow, I want to be able to give you some good information and some real world experience on that. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like this video, give me a like. Check out some of the other videos that I've done. I've done a lot of other videos on my Camaro and on just daily life with having a Camaro and just stuff like that. So if you like this type of stuff, check out my channel and, uh, Hopefully, I'll be able to give you guys some good information in the future. So thanks a lot, guys. See ya.